So when you show up at a riot and you get out of the, your your vehicles with these guns, the SWAT teams and everything, you know, these look pretty scary. So it might disperse a lot of the crowd just by the sheer look of this gun. And that's why it was designed this way. I'm River Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. So these were designed as a semi-automatic shotgun. They weren't really designed to, to use as a, a pump action shotgun unless, it, unless the situation called for it. And the only reason why you'd want to switch modes is because the pump action is going to be required to use if you're using you know, lighter loads like bean bags, tear gas, but if you're using loads like I brought here today that we're going to shoot, um, these are Hordendy Black, and these are double lot uh, buckshot, uh, 12 gauge, two and three quarter. So two and three quarter is is all you can shoot in this firearm. You can't shoot it. You can't shoot three inch or anything like that. So um, these are 1,600 feet per second. So you need that kind of firepower in order to cycle the action in this in this firearm so I mainly shoot it in the um, in the semi-auto mode because I don't want to scratch up the gun I want to keep it looking nice and that that way it maintains its value We're set up here at the 200 yard range and I usually come down here because uh, there's less activity down here at the 200 yard range. Not many people shoot here. So I'm going to set up a portable target that you might be able to see here in the background at um, probably around 20, 25 yards and we're going to shoot uh, these double lot uh, buckshot here. And this is something that's kind of... Um, unorthodox maybe to do is to shoot a Franchi out of a lead sled but here at the range we have strict rules and um, we have a firing line that you have to stand behind so and also I can't shoot watermelons and, and bottles and things like that here um, I was raised on a farm and I wish I still lived on a farm because then I had a little bit more freedom of um, shooting firearms. You've probably seen it in at least one movie because there's at least over 61 movies at the time this video is being made that this gun has been in. And um, now one of the most popular movies it's been in is The Terminator um, and also Jurassic Park, um, a couple of those too. But it's also when you know, uh, over 46 video games too. Um, uh, it's very popular um, for um, movie directors. Um, it's an excellent uh, prop uh, to have. And, um, you know, um, they cost a lot of money uh, because there's, there's only 1,850 in the United States total. Now, between 1979 and 2000, uh, there were 37,000 made, but it's a low number here in the United States. So they're kind of rare um, to buy, and if you want to buy one, uh, you better get out your piggy bank and break it because uh, uh, they're pretty costly. And you're probably wondering what I paid for this. Well, I've had this for several years, and I paid around $6,500 for it. Now they can vary in price according to the condition they're in um, and also what comes with the gun. But as you can see here, um, I got the box, the original box, and I don't know if it's even identifiable because it looked like somebody probably shipped it through the mail at one time with this box. And instead of using an outer shell uh, cardboard box um, to protect it, um, but at that time, they probably didn't know it was going to be a collector's item. But anyway, but anyway I got some double lot buck shot here. And now, like I said before, 
you have to uh, make sure when you have it in the semi-auto mode that you want to um, use uh, a shell that has enough power to cycle the action so yeah these are fairly pretty easy to load so I'm going to push the bolt release here to release the magazine door push it all the way in now it's nicer to load this upside down actually okay so we send that home all right so then the loading gate down here now these are snap caps and I recommend using these um, you don't want to practice this inside your house um, unless you're using the snap caps but that would be the only time I would practice loading it inside the house but anyway it's pretty easy turn it right down we push in the, the uh, bolt release and that releases the that releases the um, magazine door so let's put three in there all right and these guns are designed to fire with the gun in semi-auto too uh, there would be no need for us unless you just want to do it for for fun and that is to have it in the uh, uh, pump action mode all right so we're going to go ahead and insert one in here all right so we have a cross bolt safety here and we also have the quick deployment safety here and i, I really like that so the quick deployment safety i don't think you can probably see it here but when my finger's inside the trigger guard all i have to do is just flip it forward with that finger while it's still in the trigger guard that that little device safety device eliminates having to push off this cross bolt safety which is much harder to push in all right so let me get my muffs on all right all right so these are what i'm shooting here is the hordendy black and um you can buy a box of 10 and uh, these are double op buckshot but you can only shoot two and three quarters out of the franchi spaz 12 so so that's what i'm shooting here so let's go ahead and get going here and the sun's kind of right in my eyes, so okay so i'm going to put the the sights here right on the right on the bullseye here now okay I have my quick deployment in safe alrighty here we go and you always want to make sure that you're So I put that quick deployment safety again on safe. All right. <clears throat> well, it looks like it did pretty good there. I don't think I need the spotting scope. Okay. So the quick deployment safety has to be flipped off. So there I'm going to push my finger forward here we go that group shot a little higher there okay put back and safe now with this lead sled and I've said this before in my videos you always want to have that 
you always want to have it tight into your shoulder, all right? And you might wonder, this steel stock here, if that hurts your face, and it doesn't, but you always want to place your cheek right against that stock. Okay, don't be, don't have it off like a quarter inch or anything. Have it right up against it. All right. We gotta check to make sure our friend that just showed up has his muffs on, and he does. All right, here we go. So that was three shots. This does have the bolt open on the last shot fired. Alrighty. So let's change the camera angle a little bit and let you see it fire from the side here for a couple shots. So this came originally um, with the Franchi here that I have here in my hand. So this is the original one here. Uh, supposedly so um, but it doesn't look like it's been you know used that much and then also um, it did come with a owner's manual and uh, so um, that's pretty nice too because a lot of them you know you won't get the you get this st extra stuff with it so that makes it a little bit more valuable um, but I, I kind of like this owner's manual. It says right here, honestly now, have you read this owner's manual? And I think a lot of us, uh, we, we put these aside and we don't even read them. But now, this is pretty difficult to follow um, for the operation of the gun. And it makes it seem to a lot of people that it's pretty difficult to use. But actually, once you practice with the gun, it's just like any other firearm you'll get used to it and it's actually fun to shoot and put the safety on just for a second make sure we're lined up okay here we go It's really a special type of shotgun, even though it's not used that much today, and there's not many of them left, so mostly they're just wall hangers today. And you want to take care of them. Um, as you can see, this one's in very good condition here. Um, and one thing you want to look at when you go to buy one of these is if there's any marks on the in front of the receiver here. And 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 you can see from this gun, the pump action part of it hasn't been used that much. Here we go. But let's go over the features this gun has. Now this is a folding stock that can be folded out. All right, and and this part can be folded out too. Okay, and this is more recognizable with the hook out a lot of times, so mostly folded up like this. Here we go. All right. We have a cross bolt safety. Now a lot of these were, um, these were recalled um, back in the day. Uh, they used to have a, like a toggle switch here. And uh, when they would go from, switch it over from safe to fire, they would automatically fire. And so the company recalled them and they replaced them with a cross bolt safety. Now some people out there that collect these firearms they probably would want that old safety on there, especially if it's just going to be used as a wall hanger. Um, but if you're going to fire this gun and, and if you don't have the cross bolt safety, it's best to have that changed out, okay? Or another thing you can do is, 
is just not use just not use the safety here because it does have a safety on the other side here and this is a deployment safety here and it's real nice because it's right out of the way and all you have to do is just flip your finger forward now let's go over the um, the cutoff the magazine cutoff switch is right here and this is something I would never use either because this is when you would go to change it from uh, a lethal round to a non-lethal round so push that in and hold it it doesn't automatically put one back in the chamber so then you could have a chance to put like a, a bean bag in there or, or a uh, tear gas load in there. So either one of those loads would be the reason that you would use the cutoff, the magazine cutoff switch. All right. So when I first got this uh, Franchi, um, I had to replace the receiver buffer and also the uh, uh, buttstock um, shock absorber here that you can see here. and. So it's real important to plate, replace the the butt shock, shock absorber because if you don't, it's when it, when you fire the gun, the recoil is going to actually put an egg shape into the the part here of the hole of the metal, and you don't want that to happen. As you can see, as this goes back and forth, like right here, it looks pretty good. As you can see, it's not worn out in really good shape because somebody paid attention to it but that's the hole you want to be careful with so you don't want that to turn into an egg shape all right so another thing that I did was when I first got the gun and took it out of the box I noticed when I moved it around like this I would hear something rattle inside and so that concerned me um, and I started investigating what that was and here it was the receiver buffer back here so I ordered a new one of those and I replaced that too and if you think boy I don't know if you can do that or not because you're not a gunsmith but I'm not a gunsmith and I was able to do it pretty easy now it did it did require some time and some research and and everything but um, you know it was well worth it um, so but when I took it apart I mean that old buffer receiver it looked like it was the original one it just crumbled you know when I and it just it took a long time to clean it out but after I got it cleaned out and put the new one in it works fine and you can get those you can get those on the internet so both the shock absorber both the shock absorber and the receiver buffer so um, you definitely want to replace those two uh, parts before you shoot the gun all right so Anyway, um, now this is the barrel's 18 inches. It can hold up to 8.1 shells, and like I said, it's um, it's meant to fire two and three quarter shells only. And make sure you get the high power shells when you shoot with a semi-automatic load. And that's the only time that I would shoot the gun is with automatic load. You really don't need to use the pump gun because it was designed to shoot in semi-automatic. Um, so. Uh, and that protects the gun for resale value too. But to change it out, all you do is just push in that button and it just slides back and it just comes back into place right there. All right. And then to put it back into the other mode, and just make sure it clicks back into place and it'll stay there. And then you just send that home with the bolt release back here. Okay. So it's real easy to it's real easy to use and it has a um, Last shot fired has bolt open, so that's another nice feature the gun has. Um, it's gas operated, and it will fire up to 350 rounds per minute. Um, you know, um, these are great in movies because they look mean and nasty. They're very intimidating, and when Franchi uh, made these, you can see the heat shield on top really adds to the look of the gun and we can take this let's go ahead and take this uh, hook out once and basically it can be turned 90 degrees in each direction and you don't really want to fire they're they're using this gun to fire with one hand and stuff where you know you put it on there but you can actually take it all the way out and then fold this down and that looks really menacing right like that but uh, you know, uh, there's nothing scarier than this gun, and that's why they were 
designed this way to look that way because it look mean and nasty but um, well let's go over let's put the hook back in and I can show you okay so it can be this gun can be used in either hand so you can actually hold it like this and shoot it like this or left hand swing it around and use it the other way but the whole idea of this was to shoot it off just with one hand so when you shoot it with one hand the problem is it doesn't cycle nice um, your shells even though you're using high power shells like these Hornby's it's not going to cycle and the shell is going to get caught here in the action so it needs the gun needs to be placed up against your shoulder so that's another feature that I wouldn't I wouldn't use um, even though you can use it and then it can also serve as the carrying handle all right so as we can see here from what the front and spaz 12 can do can do a pretty good job there pretty good size hole there so um, but I hope this helps you out with as far as the uh, the accuracy goes at about 20 yards and um, but anyway it's something different that we could do today and you did get to see a big hole that it, the damage that it can do I appreciate you watching as always make sure you hit that subscribe button the like button it helps me out share it with your friends and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching